Okay, so when we're looking last week at problem number one, in Mr. B's classroom there are 20 students, 12 got a B, one student got a C, and the rest received an A. What percent of the class received an A? I saw evidence that there were people who figured out that seven kids got an A, but seven kids is not the percent. I also saw people who set this up and found 65% which is really the kids who didn't get an A. So I just want to walk through this and show how I would have done it so that if people made mistakes, they can fix it. We want a word ratio, our known ratio, and our unknown. So when I look at this, my word ratio, based on my question, what percent of the class received an A? Means that I need to figure out the A, number of kids who got an A, compared to the whole class. That's my word ratio. Students who got an A compared to the whole number. I heard. <laughs> On the, new, the known ratio, we know that there's 20 students. We know that 12 got a B and one got a C. 12 and one is equal to what number? 12 and 1 equals 13. The difference between 20 and 13 is 7. So the, uh, the 7 kids must have gotten an A. I saw people who set this up correctly with 13 over 20. And that would have gotten you 65%. Because our unknown is going to be X over 100. We don't know the percent of kids that got an A but we do know that the whole of a percent is always 100. And if I cross multiply this, I get 700. And divided by 20 gives me 35%. So if people who got 65% set it up correctly, except they found the percent of kids who got the B and C, and they would have needed to subtract the 65 from 100 to get 35. Right, seven is the kids, but seven is not the percent. Okay, uh, for question two, a cup of coffee costs $2.50. Well, to set this up as a unit rate, we have $2.50 for one cup. So what's our word problem? It's dollars over cups of coffee. If the total cost is $17.50, how many cups of coffee were purchased? I saw a lot of people who just set this up as a division problem, which is the action I'm going to take to solve it. But to show this as a, pro as a proportion, I would put the $7.50 here and the X here. Not $7.50, sorry, $17.50. Because $17.50 times 1 would be $17.50 still, divide it by the $2.50, and you get 7 cups. And then this is asking, what is the constant of proportionality? Remember, constant of proportionality is the same thing as our unit rate. What is our unit rate on this one? It's $2.50. Okay. On um, question three, I just want to graph it real quick. It looked like the majority of people had this graphed correctly. Um, we went one and then negative three. One, two, three. Negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and 9 would be way up here. And 2 and negative 6 would be 1, 2, 3 more there. This does make a straight line. And it does cross through the origin. So is it proportional? Yes. Okay. And we've talked a little bit about how to find the constant of proportionality on a graph if you do rise over run. We're going to talk more about that in a minute as we take some notes on this idea. And I'm counting up 1, 2, 3 over 1. So my rise is 3 and my run is 1. <clears throat> this is called a negative line. So my constant proportionality here is negative 3. Because the line is negative and I had 3 over 1, we would leave the 1 invisible. So this is a negative 3 over 1. We're not going to do a new din out today. I just wanted people to have a chance to reflect on what you were using on Friday. Um, I, again, I saw the majority of people had the correct line, although may not have known how to answer the second question here. 
but straight line going through the origin, I saw lots of yeses here that it is proportional. I saw seven cups here, but some people put the seven down here as well, forgetting that constant proportionality is the same as the unit rate, right? And then hopefully setting this up with our words, known and unknown, is a review for you guys.